So let's finally check out Purple Cali Linux. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I want to do a quick look of Purple Kali Linux. And this is the latest addition to the Kali Linux family of security focused Linux distributions. And in this video, I wanted to take a closer look at what Purple Linux is and what makes it different from other Kali Linux distributions and why it's a valuable addition to the security professional toolkit. First, let me go down and give you a brief introduction to Kali Linux. Kali Linux is a Debian based Linux distribution that is designed specifically for penetration testing, network security assessments, as well as digital forensics. And it includes a vast array of tools that are used by security professionals to test and secure networks and systems. While Kali Linux has always been a powerful tool for offensive security, it has traditionally lacked the same level of focus on defense security. And so that's where Purple Linux comes in. And Purple Linux addresses that defense security distribution of Kali Linux that's designed to help users protect their own systems from attack and breaches. Now, just to do a quick comparison, uh, Purple Kali Linux is focused on defense security, whereas other Kali Linux distributions are primarily focused on offensive security. That means that Purple Kali Linux includes a different set of tools that are designed specifically for protecting systems from attack rather than exploiting vulnerabilities. So overall, Purple Kali Linux is a val valuable addition to the Kali Linux family of distributions and a powerful tool for security professionals and enthusiasts looking to protect their own systems. So in the rest of this video, we'll take a closer look at some of the specific tools and features of the Purple Kali Linux distribution. And I also want to show you guys how to get it installed so you can use it effectively. So let's go down and hop over to the website so I can show you guys how to download it, show you guys a little bit of the system requirements to get it installed, and then walk you guys through the installation process. Let's get to it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Okay, cool. So I'm at Kali.org. And of course, I'll always have the link down in the description of the video. But this is where you can get the purple Kali Linux distro. All you have to do is hit the download button. Just show you guys. And if you scroll down, let's go to the installer images. If you click there, they'll take you down to the bottom. And then all you have to do is look for what you need based on the hardware that you have. But if we come down a little further, you'll see Kali purple. And so all you have to do is, and it keeps jumping back and forth on me. Sorry about that. Uh, but all you have to do is download it. It's 3.4 gigabytes. And they also have a torrent file you can download as well as your checksum. You know what I'm saying? So, and this is the complete offline installation, you know, with customization. And this includes all the latest and greatest features of normal Kali, the, the latest release. But it's that purple flavor. Now, if we click right here uh, under Kali documentation, this will take you to the to the documentation or the wiki page for in everything Kali purple. And I just wanted to show you guys this. Uh, it kind of covers like a lot of the tools that it has in there uh, that's included, as well as a couple of ISOs. And it just covers pretty much everything you can look to see within the purple flavor of Kali Linux. And these are some of the tools. I think I showed this in my previous video where I just talked about this latest release, but let's go on and hop over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through the full install. But yeah, like I said, this has a lot of information for you, but like all you have to do is download it. 
uh, burn it to a USB drive if you're gonna install it directly on hardware or just take that ISO, add it to your virtual machine. You can use VirtualBox. It'll work just like any other install or VMware as well as Proxmox. If you have a Proxmox server, you could just upload it up there and then install it in your virtual environment. So let's hop over and get started. And so once you got your ISO written to USB, uh, all you really have to do is follow the steps. It's very simple. I think I've done videos showing you guys how to install Kali Linux. Uh, it's the exact same way. Uh, now this is the BIOS that'll pop up. It basically asks you the options that you want to use to install. So you have the graphical installer as well as the normal install, uh, advanced options, uh, accessible, dark contrast installer menu as well as install with speech uh, synthesis now we're going to use the graphical install that's the simplest way and i'll adjust the screen so you guys can see it once we <laughs> start up and everything all right cool so i made it big so you guys can see but basically all you have to do is start off with selecting a language and mine is english so select what's good for you and one cool thing that I noticed about the installer for Kali, uh, they had a screenshot. So you can create your own tutorials or websites. You can screenshot exactly what you did through the install. So let's hit continue. Uh, I'm going to go United States. Boom. Uh, American English for my keyboard. And then the installation media is fin to mount and detect. Or it's going to detect and mount that uh, installation media. And then I'll go through, start loading up. Uh, the installer components from the installation media as well and do certain things like detect the hardware as well as networking it'll check that up check that and make sure it can connect to the internet because it needs the internet now the host name you can name it whatever you want uh, we're just gonna leave it Cali which is a default continue domain name if you're on a domain um, and hit continue there it's gonna configure pretty much everything for you now we're going into the user and all you have to do is put in whatever you want to use for a username you don't have to put your full name here i'm just put josh uh, and it's going to name my user account as josh so that's my login account and then it's going to ask you for your password so just type in super cool or super strong password for it um, boom enter it in twice hit continue and then you want to select your location so i'm on pacific standard time so i'm gonna select and then let's hit continue uh, it's gonna go through and this is where you'll set up your horror drives and everything and i'm gonna do the automatic partitioning i'm not gonna use lvm um, or the uh entire disk and set up using encrypted lvm i'm not gonna use that as well uh, but i've done videos showing people how to do this i think i did it with my arch install video so check those out if you're interested in learning how to do lvm as well as encrypted LVM. It's not difficult. Uh, the manual way you can do that as well. So let's hit continue there. Uh, it's basically gonna select that virtual disk that we have. So let's hit continue there. Uh, all in one partition. This is recommended for new users because it puts everything in one location, one partition. You gotta worry about different partitions. But most of the time I tell people to separate their home directory. Um, that's just my the way I've always done it but some people also separate home for and temp and they put it on their separate partitions uh, but I'm gonna just put everything on one partition like I said I'm gonna delete this thing afterwards so it really doesn't matter now this is basically just asking you to confirm everything so finish uh, partitioning and write changes to the disk or you can do undo changes but we're gonna hit continue that'll go through and this is the confirmation right there uh, where where it'll make everything for you to create swap for you as well so let's hit continue boom it'll partition our disk and then it should just start right with the install and it takes a while for this so i'm not going to have you sit here and watch this i'm gonna skip ahead until it actually finishes but this is a perfect time for you to go make some coffee you know what i'm saying and then come back 30 minutes later and it should be 100 percent done so i'll be back when it finishes all right so check this out the next thing that'll pop up it, it'll basically ask you uh what software you want installed meaning like the desktop environment uh as well as the defensive uh tools you know by purpose so it breaks it out you know what i'm saying they got identify tools they got protect tools they got detect tools response and recover 
and that's basically the NIST uh, domain, CSF domains, uh, and that's that's why it's broken out into those different areas or domains of defensive tools and like i said up here you can select whatever desktop environment you want the default for cali is xfce which is why i love cali so much because xfce is my favorite desktop environment uh, but then also you can do gnome as well as kde plasma but we're not going to do that we're going to use the default as well as install all our defensive tools you know by the purpose so let's go down here continue and that will go through the software install for that and as you can see it's 2000 packages 2058 packages it has to download and then go through and install so i'll be back when this actually finishes all right so the installation is complete the last thing is to install grub and basically what it's going to do is ask you where you want to install it you want to install it on the default partition or the main partition hit continue that'll install grub so therefore when it reboots it'll boot into the operating system and that's what grub is used for it basically controls the operating system or how it's actually loaded all right, cool. So we are done. And basically the last step is just to reboot. All you have to do is hit continue and that'll reboot the system. And I'll be back when it actually comes up. I'll try to uh, correct the display settings and all that stuff so we can look at the operating system. All right, cool. So we are in Cali purple. So uh, the first thing I wanted to show you guys, um, and this is what I typically do with most Linux distributions that I show on the channel. I basically run the updates. And like I said, this is a Debian based. So it uses the apt package manager. All we have to do is use that to update the system. And you want to update your system as soon as you install it. Uh, so all you have to do is run sudo apt updates. Uh, and then type in your sudo password, which is that password we set during the install. It'll go through, check to see if we have any updates. And as you can see, we got 140 packages that need to be upgraded. Now, I won't go through those upgrades uh, with you guys on here, uh, but I want to show you guys the tools and the way it's broken up into the five domains that I talked about. Uh, so you got your identify, protect, detect, respond and recover so all the tools are broken up into those five different domains or areas and it's similar to our penetration testing tools or our, our red team tools uh they're broken up and they're on here as well just so you guys know that's why the operating system takes a long time to install uh, once you get to that step but you have the information gathering so your OSINT tools your vulnerability analysis tools uh, web application tools like you can go through here and look at all a lot of the tools the major tools that you would see um, on the main Kali Linux distro so you got everything you know as far as that goes social engineering toolkit uh, and it's not everything, but it's a lot. It's still a lot. So forensic tools, uh, but let's go back up here to our identify. Just walk through a few of the things. So identifying, you can create honeypots, uh, spider foot, uh, tiger, zap. I've looked at some of these witness me. Uh, so, so a lot of these tools, or like I said, blue team tools, uh, Cisco auditing tools, um, now protect. So you got your firewall builder uh crypt setup uh and that's clam clam v i never i never used that one now detection so you got your uh logs you can look through all your logs right there that's basically uh how you do your detection using those log tools uh respond so you got all your respond tools right here uh foremost i'm trying to think of some of these ones that i've seen i'm only trying to you know point out ones that i've seen before or used before wireshark you know rk hunter uh net sniff I've, I've used that just playing around with it just see what it was uh so that's their hash rat so and then under the fifth domain is the recovery so dd rescue you know that's basically you can copy full partitions and make an image out of them using dd uh ext4 grep so or ext3 grep ext4 magic uh, my rescue recovery so it's basically a lot of tools to recover data uh that may have been intentionally deleted you know from a system or something to that effect so yeah you got all your tools for blue team you know what i'm saying in one location and that's the whole purpose of this now the system works just like any other cali distro uh, 
pretty much the same. If you have the XFCE, it's gonna have all your tools that you need in order to manage the system. Uh, you got settings manager, you know, appearance, uh, display settings, which I went in there not that long ago to fix this so you guys can see it uh, clearly. But yeah, that's pretty much it with this XFCE all day. It's super simple. Uh, you got your terminal. And one cool thing I like about it, um, you got some cool uh, backgrounds. So you could change them up and use some of the newer backgrounds that are with the regular Kali. You know what I'm saying? But I kind of like this new um, background that they created for Kali Purple. So super dope. Now, let me go ahead and close this because I might go through and start doing some videos showing you guys a lot of these tools. Um, I typically don't because I want you guys to get in there and learn them yourselves. But uh, introductory, you know, tutorial of using some of these Kali tools um, may be interesting for you guys to see and it may help you guys. Um, like I said, I'm not a cybersecurity professional. I work in tech though. I work as a database administrator. And a lot of this Linux stuff that I do is really just something that I do on the side as a hobby, so to speak. So I kind of play around with these tools, but I understand the importance of cybersecurity and I understand that the cybersecurity field is in need of a lot more people working in it. And so I really want to push people to that. Now that's pretty much it you have successfully installed purple you know Kali Linux on your computer if you followed all these steps and I hope this tutorial you know was helpful and if you have any questions make sure you leave them down in the comments below and if you found this tutorial useful be sure to go down and like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and I hope you have a wonderful day and of course keep the techie